Um, we left off with just a couple of minutes on a, what is this? Goblet of Fire. <clears throat> with Dumbledore. Well, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna skip that part. Um, Harry explains everything that happened. They talk about the people that they saw. Dumbledore said there's there's shadow, shadows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They talk about the spells that the wands performed, and uh, Mrs. Weasley comes in page six ninety nine, along with Bill, Ron, Hermione, Madam Pomfrey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I'm going to skip a bit. They hear Fudge outside, Fudge and Snape outside, and 701, 702, McGonagall comes in, and Dumbledore says, 702, what has happened? Why are you disturbing these people, Minerva? I'm surprised, blah, blah, blah. She says, I'm disturbing because of what he's done. You know, there's no need to stand over Barty Crouch. And Fudge says, by all accounts, he is no loss, because we hear Fudge had the Dementors do the Dementors kiss to him. By all accounts, he is no loss, page 703. It seems he has been responsible for several deaths. Dumbledore, but he cannot now give testimony. Okay. Do I want to go there? Well, hold on, hold on. I might still. Cannot now give testimony, cannot give evidence about why he killed those people. Fudge, he was a lunatic, okay, saying, you know, whose instructions, etc. Dumbledore says, Voldemort was giving him instructions, Cornelia. Those people's deaths were mere byproducts of a plan to restore Voldemort to full strength again. The plan succeeded, Voldemort's back. Come on, it can't be back, okay. So, Dumbledore kind of recounts what they, McGonag what he, McGonagall, Snape, etc., all heard Barty Crouch confess, they heard Barty Crouch confess this, right? They saw Barty Crouch confess this. What could they do? The memory thing? Veritas serum? But what's the problem with Veritas serum? If you really believe something is true, then you're going to say that. But what if what you really believe is true isn't true? You're still going to say that it's true, okay? What else? Pensive? They could each take their thoughts, put them in the pensive, and then they could go into the pensive and relive them all as if they were exactly true. Yeah, can those be uh, manipulated? Memories can be manipulated, we find out, books six and seven. Okay? What else? We manipulate our memories. How so? Bingo. What comes in through these does not get recorded on this like a magnetic tape or like a hard drive. What do I do? And what every one of you, every class you have, if you take notes, which is very few, um, if you take notes, how do you do it? Do you do it verbatim? You write down everything? No. no. Why? Because you can't write as fast as I can talk. <laughs> and if we wanted verbatim, we could just watch the video. And if you wanted ver verbatim, because I put them up on YouTube, you could do that. Okay? Why else? Because there's a lot of stuff I say that's not important, right? Like what? Well, when you're reading, what kind of words are important? What are the important words? Nouns? Verbs. Verbs. Pronouns. Sometimes adjectives, adverbs. What about articles? Prepositions. Not prepositions. Pervert positions. Prepositions. Not really. I mean, they, they are when you're writing a paper and you're saying... You know, something went to some that kind of thing. But in terms of speech, no, we kind of gloss over that. You remember 
the big things, who does what to whom, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So they can't use that. So they really do need Barty Crouch, but now he's a vegetable, so you can't get a piece of celery to talk. Um, fudge, 704. See here, Dumbledore, you, you can't seriously believe that. You know who, back? Come on, come on. After all, how long's it been? It's been 13 years since he was back. He couldn't be back. It would be like what in our world? Okay, but Hitler's a little far back. What's a little more recent? Hussein. Hussein, even worse. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. What, what would happen, you know, now that quote-unquote collusion's been you know, proven false forever, what would happen, let's say, if tomorrow morning there were a video that surfaced on TV of somebody who looks exactly like Osama bin Laden, somebody who sounds exactly like Osama bin Laden, with the New York Times dated... March 26th, 2019, and he was talking about upcoming plans. What, what would happen in the United States? Wild guesses. Like what? People oh. marching on Obama's house? Probably not that bad. I think a lot of people would feel like he was they just a doppelganger. Okay. Assume for a moment proof. Okay. It's it's not a doppelganger. It's him. You know, he submitted DNA evidence. This is me. I'm really me. I wasn't killed by SEAL Team 6. I wasn't dumped in the ocean somewhere. I'm really alive. You've been lied to by your government. What would what would be the reaction? That would be one reaction. It'd be who do you trust? I mean, I mean, the president of the United States said on TV, "We got him, we got him," etc. And all the power of government. Yeah, for a lot of people, that'd be well. The hell with all of them. I don't trust anyone. But I do think there would be some chaos. I do think there would be calls for heads to roll. Maybe not the president's, because I'm sure there would, you know, what would be introduced would be plausible deniability. He didn't know. He didn't see the body. He didn't touch it for himself, you know. He didn't perform the DNA analysis. But whose heads could roll? SEAL Team 6, General McRaven, who ordered SEAL Team 6, it's, you know, and pretty much on up the line probably to, I don't remember who was Secretary of Defense at the time, probably about that high. Okay? That is why Fudge is having such a hard time. It, plus, he's a moron. Okay? I mean, you, you can't forget that part. Okay? Come on, certainly. Crouch may have noticed, believed himself to be acting upon you know whose orders. What has he just introduced? That's the out for the veer to serum. Because a lunatic, what? Really believes he sees and hears voices. When Harry touched a Triwizard Cup tonight, he was transported straight to Voldemort. He witnessed Voldemort's rebirth. What's going up to my office? Uh, Dumbledore glances around, sees Harry's awake, and he says, no, you're not going to question Harry tonight. Come on, you're going to take... You're going to take his word on it. And Harry says, Dumbledore says, certainly I will. You're prepared to believe that? And then Harry says, you've been reading Rita Skeeter, haven't you? Okay, what's the equivalent of Rita Skeeter in our world? BuzzFeed. Is it BuzzFeed? Like the no, onion or... No! 
What's the equivalent of Rita Skeeter? What is Rita Skeeter publishing? The Daily Prophet. Bingo. New York Times. Washington Post. It is the mouthpiece of the government, per se. So, she is like a reporter. She's like Carl Bernstein. Or Bob Woodward used to be. Okay? The guys who brought down Nixon. But, BuzzFeed. The Onion. Okay? Why? Okay, got to make some money. Okay, what do we what do we come to learn? I mean, we already know she does what to her stories. Twist them. She twists them. She embellishes them. One of the things that's been said about Bob Woodward, one of the guys who wrote all the presidents' man brought down Nixon, etc. You know, he's done I don't think like something like a dozen biographies of famous people since then, presidents primarily. Okay, you know how he does how he writes his biographies. He goes in and he records, but then where he doesn't have recordings of conversations, he imagines how they went, and then writes that. These are biographies. Biographies are supposed to be what? Writings of life. They're supposed to be actual, okay, but that's fiction. If you imagine what a conversation was like, because you weren't there, and the participants who were there aren't telling you, that's fiction. That's kind of like what, what she does. But the Daily Prophet is like the Wall Street, uh, the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, news pages, New York Times, etc. We tend to think it's like BuzzFeed or The Onion or the National Enquirer in our world. What is like? The National Enquirer in their world. Quibbler. The Quibbler, book five. And yet, the Quibbler in book five publishes a series of articles that are quote unquote true. The National Enquirer published in our world a series of articles, broke some stories that were true, that other major news outlets, NBC for example, had hold of, but refused to report. For example, a major 2004 presidential contender's history of infidelity to his wife who had cancer. She's dying and he's cheating on her, John Edwards. Okay. I mean, big stuff. Why is this important? Because what's Harry saying there? You've been reading, Mister. Uh, you've been reading Rita Skeeter. What's Harry slash Rowling saying there? You're actually believing a journalist. You're actually believing a journalist. See, Rowling starts to introduce that actually even before this, before this novel. She she takes a couple shots at journalists, and guess what? She doesn't stop. It becomes pretty clear. She doesn't care for journalists very much. She does interviews. She did interviews while writing these seven books. But it's almost like, you know, she did interviews realizing, okay, this is going to get mangled. <laughs> okay? So, and if I have, notice he doesn't say, no, no, I haven't been reading that stuff. If I have discovered you've been keeping certain facts about the boy very quiet, a parcel mouth, for example. Okay? Headaches, nightmares, all that kind of stuff. And Harry finally says, page 706, I saw Voldemort come back. Notice, he uses the name. He uses the name. He doesn't say, I saw he who must not be named. Why? He's not afraid of it. He's not afraid of it. The Minister of Magic is. Does Arthur Weasley use the name? Nope. Does Snape? Nope. Snape does what? The Dark Lord. Why does Snape call him that? Why doesn't Snape call him Voldemort? He was his servant, which means what? <sighs> he knows what he's capable of. You got to give some respect to that guy. You don't have to agree with it. Okay? Lupin calls him by his name. Sirius will call him by his name, etc. So, 
Harry starts doing what? Oh, you want to know who was there? You want to know who I saw tonight? Lucius Malfoy. Malfoy was cleared. Very old family. What does that mean? Pure blood. What does it really mean? Okay, it can mean wealthy. That comes in the next clause. Oh, we can trust this guy. He's a Kennedy. That's what it means. He's a Bush. They go way back. Okay. It's the idea of blood and heredity being what's important. Because Dumbledore is going to say something in a couple of moments that's going to say it's not important at all. So who else does Harry name? Oh, oh yeah. Donations to excellent causes. He, he can't be a bad guy. He gives money to charity. McNair, also cleared, now working for the ministry. Bing, bing, that should be a warning sign, you know. Avery, not Crab, Goyle. You're merely repeating the names of those who were acquitted of being Death Eaters 13 years ago. You could have found those names in old reports of the trials. They were acquitted, so they're not in the Azkaban. They were acquitted, so they never went to Azkaban. What did you say, David? Where would they get uh, the you know, access to the reports of the trials? That's a question I'm always wondering. Because what kind of trials would those be? Would you think, I mean, are those every everyday run-of-the-mill district court? No, no, they're not. They would be national security. This is like FISA court stuff, I would think. I could be entirely wrong. I have no idea what J.K. Rowling actually intended with that. But he makes it like he went down to the local library, pulled out a microfiche, starts you know, fiddling around. Oh, there, look at that. It's right there in the Daily Prophet. All the names. Okay. The boy was full of some crackpot story at the end of last year, too. McGonagall, you fool. Cedric Diggory. Mr. Crouch, how did they get unliving? I see no evidence to the contrary. Okay, Dumbledore finally says, Voldemort has returned, page 707. If you accept that fact straight away, Fudge, take the necessary measures, we may still be able to save the situation. So, here are the necessary measures. Get control of Azkaban out of the hands of the Dementors. Are you crazy? He says, half of us only feel safe in our beds at night because we know, we know the Dementors are there. Dumbledore, yeah, well, the other half of us sleep less soundly at night. Notice, what does that say about society? Applicability to our world? <laughs> okay. Because who are the Dementors? Who would they naturally align with? If they suck all the joy out of you, and you have people who walk around, run around, in white hoods and sheets, torturing people for fun, who taught who, you know? So, they won't remain loyal to you. So that's the first. Get rid of the Dementors, okay? What else? Send envoys to the giants. Are you? Okay. Extend the hand of friendship. You can't be serious. If the magical community got wind that I'd approach the giants, people hate them, Dumbledore. That's not important. It's the last part that he says that's important. End of my career. I would lose power. I would lose my cushy job. You are blinded by the love of the office you hold, Cornelius. You place too much importance, and you always have done on the so-called purity of blood. Hagrid said about the Malfoys, book two, they were what? Bad blood. Bad blood. Rotten to the core. Okay? And yet in this book, when Hagrid gets written about by Rita Skeeter, and it's revealed he's half-giant, and he refuses to go back to school and teach, and Dumbledore says, I don't accept your resignation. And Harry and Hermione and, and 
Ron, saying you're the best teacher we've ever had, blah, 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 blah. Hagrid says what about Dumbledore? Gives people second chances, even though they may not come from the best of families. And then he says what? He says people can change. He gives them second chances. Is that because Hagrid has learned so much since the second book? No. It's because I don't think Hagrid was thinking when he said what he said in the second book. So, you fail to recognize it matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. What did he tell Harry in his debriefing at the end of book two? It is our choices, Harry, that show what we really are, far more than our abilities. What kind of abilities did Barty Crouch Jr. have? Abilities, not choices. He had good abilities, right? He was a powerful wizard. What kind of abilities did Barty Crouch Sr. have? He was powerful, Sirius tells us. What choice did he make? Send his own son to Azkaban. And then bring him back out. Why? Because of love? Guilt, his, di his wife died, etc. Okay. Your Dementor has just destroyed the last remaining member of a pure blood family as old as any. And see what he chose to make of his life. Notice, Dumbledore is saying he wasn't a lunatic. He chose to do this. He had what going for him? He had everything. He had wealth, he had power, he had prestige. I could go all political, some of you will love this. He was Donald Trump Jr. I mean, everything going for him. And what did he do? He threw it all away to join the dark side. <laughs> Take the steps I've suggested and you will be remembered in office or out. You might lose your job. In office or out, what? As one of the bravest and greatest ministers of magic we've ever known. What's he, what's he saying? Do the right thing. Yeah, you might lose your job. But you might lose your job and be respected. As opposed to losing your job and be proven a fool. Fail to act, and history will remember you as the man who stepped aside and allowed Voldemort a second chance to destroy the world we have tried to rebuild. So let's go back to my question earlier and go with the answer I think Caitlin said, Hitler. You know, Hitler, quote unquote, died. And I think Hitler did die. I don't, I don't believe all the conspiracy stuff. But let's say for a moment the conspiracy stuff is true. And we discovered in 1985 Hitler was alive and well in Argentina, which is what the conspiracy theories say. How would that have changed the course of history from 1945 to 1985? How would that have required the rewriting of history books? <laughs> Not enough duct tape in the world to keep my head together. That's how important that would be. So, Dumbledore says, If your determination to shut your eyes will carry you as far as this, Cornelius, we have reached a parting of the way. You must act as you see fit, and I'll act as I see fit. Now, see here, Dumbledore, I've given you free reign. I've had a lot of respect for you. I might not have agreed with some of your decisions. What is he implying there? I've allowed you to basically. I've allowed you to run the school the way you want to. But can he? No, he can't. He can try, but he doesn't have that authority at this point. We're going to see in the beginning of the next book. He takes that authority pretty soon. Okay, Dumbledore. Only one against whom I intend to work is Voldemort. If you're against him, then we remain on the same side. So what does Snape finally do? And notice who's there when he does this. You've got Harry, 
Beakley's? McGonagall? Madam Pumphrey? Sirius is there in his dog form? And he does this. There. Right there. He says, not as dark as it was an hour ago, but you can still see it clearly, and it's the dark mark. Skull with a snake coming out of its mouth. That's not the kind of thing you go down to the local tat shop, you know, to just get for fun. It's kind of like, that's patented. Only certain people can get it. There's only one place that does it, you know. Because what happens when Voldy presses on one? It's a beep, 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 beep. It's a homing device to everybody. Come. Okay? Like a, does it make them all evaporate too? It doesn't make them evaporate. It's telling them, you need to come now. That's Voldemort's way of saying, come. Okay? Which is why when they all apparated, he said, you know, here's a bunch and there's some in Azkaban. Here's one who I think has left our group forever. He'll be killed. Who is that? Kirk off. Oh, no. The one he's not quite sure about, he thinks he's turned that snake, okay? So, what does he do? He then walks over to Harry, he dumps a thousand bucks on his bed, says, here's your winnings, okay? So, um, let's see here. Dumbledore gives some orders to people. He makes Sirius reveal himself. Mrs. Weasley goes crazy. Why? What does she still think? He's a mass murderer. Okay. Ron tells her to shut up. <laughs> what else? We see bottom of 712. He tells um, Sirius, bottom of 712, top 713, work for each of you to do. He says, go alert Remus Lupin, Arabella Fig, first book, Mrs. Mrs. Fig. Harry's um, babysitter who smells like cabbage stew or something. He's got all the cats. Okay, Mundungus Fletcher, the old crowd. We don't know who the old crowd really are till the beginning of the last book. Did I have the quiz? Did I have the quiz for this? Did I have the question about what was the name of the old crowd? No. no. Okay, good. <laughs> because it wouldn't have been fair. Um, okay. So Snape and Sirius have got to, you know, Make nice. Um, let's see here. Page seven, twenty one and twenty two. End of the year feast. Dumbledore says there's a lot I'd like to tell you about, but he wants them to stand and toast Cedric Diggory. So they all stand, they toast him, Cedric's over there crying, uh, not Cedric, <laughs> Joe's over there crying. <laughs> Dumbledore tells us some things about Cedric. He was a good and loyal friend, a hard worker, he valued fair play. That's why he says he exemplified many of the qualities that exemplify, that distinguish Hufflepuff House. Notice, good, loyal, friend, hard worker, fair. His death has affected you all, and I'm going to tell you how it came about. He was murdered by Voldemort. Ooh. He said a couple of things there. One, the name. It's probably the first time in their lives most of those students have heard Voldemort's name. Okay? Two, he said Voldemort's back, because Voldemort couldn't have killed him if he wasn't back. Okay? And then he says this. The United States government doesn't want you to know this. So what automatically happens to every set of ears in that room? What? 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 Okay. So he goes on and talks, talks about Harry. And all Harry's like, thanks, really. You had to do that. Because now all set of eyes are on Harry. And then Dumbledore says, 723, every guest in this hall... We'll be welcome back here at any time. That is all you Durmstrang boys, because it's implied they're all males, and all you Bobaton girls, come back. We are only as strong as we are united, as weak as we are divided. 
Voldemort's gift for spreading discord and enmity is very great. We can fight it only by showing equally strong bond of friendship and trust. Notice, differences of habit and language are nothing at all if our aims are identical and our hearts are open. Does he say differences of habit and language are nothing? No, he doesn't. They're only nothing if what? Two conditions. If we have the same goals and we have open hearts. What does it mean to have an open heart? Accepting. To be accepting of others whose habits in language might be different. The way somebody dresses, the way somebody speaks, the way somebody walks, the way somebody talks, okay? So, he says, we're facing dark and difficult times. Some of you in this hall have already suffered directly at the hands of Voldemort. Such as? Cho. Who do we know by name? Okay, Cho, because her boyfriend's dead. Cedric's dead. Amos, if he's there, but I don't think he's there at this Neville. point. Harry, Neville, Hagrid. Hagrid. Anybody Snape, else? From a certain perspective. Not from a certain perspective, oh. Snape. <laughs> Definitely. But Snape's probably not there. Because oh. what did he have to do? He'll return to Lord of Voldemort. He said, Are you ready? He said, I am. He's got me with you. Because, you know? yeah. <laughs> man, you're going to need him. <laughs> Remember Cedric. Remember, well, let me go back for just a second. Many of your families have been torn asunder. We find out many other names in the next book. Many other students whose families were part of the Order of the Phoenix or earlier. Okay, So, remember Cedric. Remember if the time should come when you have to make a choice between what is right and what is easy. Who had that kind of choice to make just a few pages earlier? Fudge. And he fudged it up. Remember what happened to a boy who was good and kind and brave because he strayed across the path of Lord Voldemort. Notice, what's he saying about the choice Cedric made? What was the easy choice? Take the cup. What would have happened? <laughs> he still would have died. But he made the right choice, which was either... Let Harry take it, because that's what he wanted Harry to do, or take it together. Notice, if you're Cedric, you're screwed either way. Catch 22. He's not walking out of there alive. If Harry had taken it alone. Okay, if Harry had taken it alone, yeah. But I mean, according to the kind of character Harry, Cedric has, he was never going to take the cup by himself. According to what we know of Harry's character, he was never going to take the cup. Not, you know, you're, you're Cedric, the cup's my bottle, and I'm over here and i got a bum leg that's, you know, bleeding. Okay, I'm, no, you take it. Okay, so, what's Dumbledore mean? Even if you do all the right things, you may not stay out of his way. Even if you do all the right things, you might still die. That's what he's saying. So therefore, what? Do the right thing. Even if it costs your death, do the right thing. Notice, Cedric isn't hovering over at the Hufflepuff table. Why not? He accepted it. He's not a ghost. Showing he had a well-organized mind. He was prepared to die. We're not told how he was prepared to die. I mean, was he prepared to die that moment? Wands out, do you reckon? <laughs> and he's dead. He's just like, okay, I'm ready to die right here, right now. No, I think Dumbledore is telling us with the qualities that he had. Good and loyal friend, hard worker, honest and fair, he had his priorities right. And he died because of that. Okay, so leave that. Took way longer than I expected. 
can go to this. Okay. So, ah, geez, this is going to take so long. <laughs> um, skip all the stuff about Harry looking for the newspapers and all that. Why is he trying to? Why is he trying to get the news and everything? Why? What's he expecting should be happening? Mass murders, mass abductions, people, you know. Why? Because that's what he was told it was like the last time. Yeah. And what's happening? Nothing. Nothing. So, what's happening in Harry as a result of that nothing out there? Going crazy and building up what? Anger. Anger. Yeah. Okay. So, he goes off. He sees Dudley and his friends. Harry goes off to the park. And he sees Dudley and his friends come in. Page 11 and following. And let me just draw your attention to something real quickly. Um, bottom of page 7. Harry felt a dull sinking sensation in his stomach. Before he knew it, the feeling of hopelessness rolled over him again. So, he feels hopeless, okay? Um, bottom of page 8. He's hearing from Ron and Hermione, who are together, okay, somewhere, he doesn't know where, and he's thinking, how come they're having fun? I mean, I'm the one who's done everything. Have they all forgotten what I've done? Okay. Page 9. Almost the exact middle of the page. In fact, Harry thought his behavior had been very good considering frustrated and angry he felt. Bottom of the page. In the meantime, another restless, disturbed night dreaming about Cedric. Okay? And feeling trapped when he was awake. Top of ten. The injustice of it all welled up inside him so that he wanted to yell with fury. Couple lines down. How could Dumbledore have forgotten? A few more lines down. These furious thoughts, next line, insides, writhed with it. What are we being told about Harry? He's, he's pissed. He's, he's nuclear pissed. He's, you know. Okay. And so he goes off to the park, and he's in that swing, and he sees Dudley and his friends. Come on, let me go right out of the way. Come on. Come on. Come and have a go. Why? Because I got to blow some steam, man. He didn't want to lose face. Dudley wouldn't want to lose face in front of his gang. He'd be terrified of provoking Harry. It would be really fun to watch Dudley's dilemma, to taunt him, to watch him with him powerless to respond. And if any of others tried well, then, you know, he'd love to vent some of his frustration on the boys who had once made his life hell. Okay? Right? But they didn't turn around, and we get this line. Harry mastered the impulse to call after him. Them. Seeking a fight was not a smart move. You must not use magic. Why do we get all the language about Harry's frustration and anger and fury writhing inside him, and then how he wants to provoke Dudley, and we get that language about Venting his frustration. Think about it for a moment. If Harry vents his frustration <coughs> on Dudley and his gang, where does that frustration go? Dudley and his gang. Right? So they're now frustrated. What about Harry? He's still frustrated. He's still frustrated. Would he still be frustrated? No. Yeah. Your problems don't just go away. You would feel that easy. Oh, okay. Like a person who's been like super pissed and grumpy, like you finally get your get your bag a little bit. Better. Every now and then, my wife will go, go work out. Just go work out. Why? Because she means I need two hours of squats and deadlifts and you know. Lifting 300 pounds. Just just get it so that I can barely move afterwards. That's what she means. Would he get it all out? No, he wouldn't. 
Would he feel better afterwards? Yes. But is he going to? Notice what he says. It would be really fun to watch Dudley's dilemma, to taunt him, watch him with him powerless to respond. He's not talking about using magic. Yeah, if, you know, one of Dudley's friends mouths off or takes a swing at him, Harry's going to let him have it. But what's he doing? It's something that we heard referred to in an earlier novel. But it's not literal like it is in that earlier novel. Harry is, by doing this, by venting, what's he want to do? He wants to transfer his powers. Which powers? All of that anger. Is Harry naturally, books one through four, an angry person. So you walk around with a scowl on his face, you know, see a bug, you know. No, he doesn't. He's generally what kind of person? Happy. Not jovial. He's not walking around, doo -doo -doo, you know, he's not a moron. Kind of a kind of stuff. Okay? He wants to do that, and then he'll feel better, because how is he feeling now? Well, ever since the end of the last book, He's the one full of frustration. Little clue. Why is he doing this? Why is he feeling this way? Because Daddy's back. Okay, go back to this. What did, what did Voldemort do the night that he gave Harry that scar? He transferred some of his powers. He put a bit of himself into me. Uh huh. And now. The real self is totally back. Well, what happens almost immediately after that? Now that the real self is totally back, it's almost like the little part of you that is in Harry, it's kind of going, feed me, feed me. And what's the me? Anger, frustration, hate. Because that's what motivates him. Okay? So, but they don't. So, Harry sees the gang leave. He comes up behind Dudley. What does he do? Taunts him. Taunts him. How? Calls him. Uh, hey, Big D. Okay. Oh, it's you. How many of you have read all the books? Anybody? A couple of you. I haven't read several years. Okay. There's a scene in the book, in seven, book seven. Oh, Kaylee just got it. Where well, Harry does that exact same thing. It's just not, hey, Big D. It's, see ya, Big D. And if I remember correctly, um, that entire scene is, is not in the film. Apparently it's, it's, in the, it's in the extended. It's not in the theatrical release. Okay. Which is huge. It is so huge. It and a corresponding scene at the end of the eighth film, totally, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating, they totally change the story arc of the films from book one, film one, through the end of film eight. They make the films totally about revenge. Harry's revenge against Voldemort by taking the scene out from the opening of book seven and the scene out from the end of book seven. With those scenes in, they're not about revenge at all. In fact, what we get at the end of book seven, take that back, beginning book seven and end of book seven, it's another word that begins with R-E. And it's the same thing Dumbledore is hoping, um, Gandalf is hoping for Gollum. It's redemption. Totally changes. Okay? So what do we see here? Page 13. You think I'm crazy about Harry 
transferring some of his powers. I can see it in your faces. Look at the bottom of 13. So now they're walking side by side. They're going back to the house. And Harry just won't stop. He calls him Dinky Diddy Dums and Popkin and Okay, so how's Dudley changed between the previous books and now? He's ripped. He is now the Southeast England boxing champion for his age. He's gone from being the size of a small a baby killer whale to now being ripped. And Harry's picking a fight. How has Harry changed? Has Harry been hitting the gym? No. He's a little taller, but he's still a scrawny runt, okay? A muscle was twitching in Dudley's jaw, bottom of 13, gave Harry enormous satisfaction to know how furious he was making Dudley. He felt as though he was siphoning off his own frustration into his cousin, the only outlet he had. So, two things. One, he's transferring that to Dudley. He's also using Dudley almost like a pin set. They turn, and what happens almost immediately? They get attacked by Dementors, right? Okay, so what do Dementors do? They feed on joy. How much joy is there in these two right now? Not a lot, okay? So Dudley, you know, tries the old one-two against them. Doesn't work. And Harry saves them. He can finally come up with a... Expecto Patronum. Why is I hate her her thing for what you have to do to come up with an Expecto Patronum. Have your little pixie dust and think of unicorns and fairy tales and you know happy thoughts. Well, what's his happy thought? He's gonna have a hard hard time coming up with one, right? Okay, but he does, and he saves Dudley. They get home. Notice Mrs. Fig helps him home. We find out about. Mundungus Fletcher, he gets home, all hell breaks loose, owls start coming. Harry mentions the mentors, page 31. It wasn't me, it was a couple of Dementors. A couple of what? What's this, Codswallop? Vernon asks. Notice, Dementors. Harry slows it down so Vernon can understand. Two of them. What the ready all are Dementors? They guard the wizard prison. Yes, come in. Says Aunt Petunia. And Harry's world just did what? Blend. <laughs> How many times yeah. in Harry's 15 years, it's almost his birthday. Of course, birthday's already come and gone. I can't remember which. How many times has his aunt mentioned his mother or anything about his mother's world? She actually has. Anybody remember when? Uh, at the very beginning, talking about Petunia and Ron. In the hut, on the rock, in the sea. At the bottom of the sea? No, it's in the sea. Yeah, exactly. When Hagrid shows up. Of course we knew. How could we not know? She was a freak. And she just what? She vents, man. I mean, it's just, it's like 10 years. Okay. Coming home with frog spawn and turning tin pin cushions into teacups. Um, what would that fall under? Transfiguration. Which would be illegal outside of school. However, neither of her parents are magical. We find out, you know, there's a charm thing that the parents are supposed to kind of, you know, self-report. Yeah, none. Another little mm, flaw in the law, let's say. So, pardon? Snape's family lived around there. Yes, they did. Hold that idea. Don't say anything else. Okay. So, they guard the wizard prison. And she says, I heard that awful boy telling her about them years ago. 
And who do we assume that awful boy is? Don't say anything about books six or seven. James. It's James. It's what we assume. Why do we assume that? If you mean my mom and dad, notice she doesn't reply. <laughs> Harry was stunned, except for one outburst years ago. She never mentioned her sister. He was astounded she'd remembered the scrap of information. Okay. So, Harry gets a letter, another letter from Mafalda Hopkirk. You're not going to be expelled. You are going to be tried. Okay. So, page 35. Harry's getting angry again because he keeps getting letters and people are telling him, calm down, don't do anything. 37. He says he must have sent them. Vernon, who? Lord Voldemort. He goes, hold on. I've heard that name before. The, the giant guy. He, he said he's gone. He's back. It felt very strange to be standing here in Aunt Petunia's surgically clean kitchen beside the top of the range fridge and the widescreen television and talking calmly of Lord Voldemort to Uncle Vernon. Why the emphasis? Why mention? Surgically clean kitchen, top of the range fridge, widescreen TV. Aspects of their personality and their okay. home. Okay. Aspects of personality, home, why else? Nothing like the master. Bingo. Top of the range Fridge, that is, most expensive refrigerator you can buy. Tells us what about. They rip. Okay, what else? They gotta have the best. They gotta have the best. They have to be better than the best. Widescreen TV in the kitchen? <laughs> huh. The arrival of the Dementors in Little Winging seemed to have caused a breach in the great invisible wall. So here, we don't have much time. Here is the great invisible wall. Here's the magical world. Here's the muggle world. Notice there are two halves of what? Bingo. Exact same world. Are they two halves? No. This is an improper representation. It ought to be like this. They lie like this. Okay. But it's not that one is superimposed on the other. It's they interpenetrate. Harry, notice caused a breach in the great invisible wall that divided the relentlessly non-magical world of Privet Drive and the world beyond. Is Privet Drive relentlessly non-magical? The Dursleys maybe are. And yet, Harry lives there. Mrs. Fig lives there. We can, we'll find out later. She's a squib. When Douglas Fletcher lives there, Dumbledore shows up there. The very first novel opens up with a cat sitting on the wall, and then that cat turns into Miss McGonagall. Not there per se. He's there supposed to be helping keep an eye on, on Harry over the summer. Okay. Harry's two lives had somehow become fused, and everything had been turned upside down. Notice, Harry's two lives. What's the problem from the narrator's description? They're not two lives. It is one life. Harry's experience of it, it has been, it's two. That is, this is the material, let's say, and over here, this is different. We'll talk about that different because we've run out of time. Okay, we'll pick up with 37 and never get caught up. <laughs>